Torrance here and today I'm back again with another knitting podcast video. I'm not even sure what number this is. I am still at uni and will be until December so sorry my background isn't so great, my lighting is not so great, we're just going to have to deal with it. However I have still managed to knit quite a lot of stuff while I've been here at uni so I do have a few things to show today. I have a couple of different finished objects and I also have far too many work in progress bits and pieces to show you. I apparently just keep casting things on for some reason. As usual I'll start off by mentioning what I'm wearing. This is of course the April cardigan that I devoted quite a lot of an episode to a few weeks ago, um, so that should be relatively easy to find on my channel. This April cardigan is knitted in my favourite yarn combination ever, which is the Knitting for Olive Merino and the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. The shades are I believe Marzipan and Putty for the Merino and Mohair respectively. The pattern is by Petite Knit and this cardigan is pretty much unmodified from the pattern with the only major exception being the double knitted button band which I talk a lot more about in that video, that podcast episode where I've just finished it and I also compare it to another April cardigan that I made before which doesn't have this button band. I also have some details on my Ravelry as usual that will be linked in the description if you want to read more about how I modified this cardigan. It's the size small because I do find that this pattern tends to come up slightly smaller than a lot of other patina patterns that are usually very oversized. I noticed that this cardigan has a slight tendency for the button band to sort of gape a little when it's done up because it does come up quite small and so I did size up. My measurements would make me a size extra small according to patina patterns. So yes, missing for of yarn. It's a size small and I speak about it a lot more in a previous video so I don't want to go on about it too much. I am also wearing, um, I will try to show you but it's kind of hard, this is my skirt. I wanted to wear it today because I did just release a pattern which I'm super excited about. This is my own design. It is a skirt pattern which also includes instructions for how to add inset shorts. So if you want to sort of loungewear knit skirt to wear around your house, uh, I've just released a pattern for one. It's great as a skirt too, this one that I'm wearing today does not have inset shorts in it, I just wear it with black tights in the winter, and it's made with Drops Soft Tweed in I think colour number 8 Peppercorn. It's not the darkest shade, it's not black, it's more of like a very dark grey with a tweedy look to it which is very pretty. And it's a yarn with a very sort of interesting dry feeling texture, I think it has quite a bit of alpaca in it, I'm not sure. I don't generally want to use too much drops yarn, I will buy better where I can afford it, but sometimes I can't afford it. And then it's a very good quality yarn to use given the price. I got it on sale so I think this skirt costs less than, I was going to say £20 but I think it actually costs less than £15 for me to knit materials. I have made the size B, the second size, which is my size according to the measurements. And yes, as I said, it will be linked in my Ravelry if you would like to knit a skirt yourself. Okay, so let's move straight on to the big finished object, which I did say in the last video I would have finished by this video, um, so here she is. This was a work in progress in the last video and this is the Moby Sweater by Petite Knit. The theme of this episode is going to be things that are slightly too small for me. There are going to be several items in this video which are slightly too small for me and uh, we're getting the ball rolling here with the first one which is this jumper. Now before I start dragging this jumper and the pattern I want to first of all make it very clear that I very much like this jumper. I've worn it very frequently since I finished it and while it is significantly smaller than it appears in like the pattern images and stuff and my gauge is off, because it's intended to be so oversized, it coming up a lot smaller than I expected isn't a huge problem. It just gives me a slightly more regular fit jumper than being hugely oversized like most of my other jumpers, which is a good thing because there's definitely more of a niche in my wardrobe for something that's not hugely oversized. Like this is a lot easier to put under a jacket or something than most of my massive jumpers. So yes, I love this jumper. Um, but I will talk a little bit about some of my issues with it and I will also put it on because I haven't yet had a chance to take any good pictures of it but I want to show you how it looks when I wear it. So I'll start off by talking about the yarn that I used. This is Peer Gint by Sunnisgarn. It is 100% Norwegian wool and I use this new colourway um, which has these little tweed flecks in it but otherwise it's a natural sort of cream colour. Now the yarn itself is very lovely. I had not used this yarn before. I know it's very affordable and it's very popular but it's not something I'd ever worked with. 
So I was kind of expecting it to be quite woolly or rough, mostly because I know a lot of people choose to spend quite a lot more on the San Nascan Double Sunday, which is also DK weight but which is merino wool, and therefore less scratchy I suppose. But actually this pigint is also not scratchy at all, at least to me. I can wear it around my neck with no irritation and it doesn't bother me at all. I would say it's pretty soft compared to a lot of other sort of 100% non-merino wool yarns. Now it's weird because I read a lot online about people who really struggle to meet like a DK kind of gauge with this yarn. A lot of people say that it leans quite heavy for a DK and I, I would say that it does, but it is definitely a DK. This pattern calls for, I believe, the double sundae held with a strand of silk mohair, but the yarn alternative also given in the pattern is this seamless pigment held on its own. So I went for that because I already have a lot of mohair jumpers, I already have a lot of cream mohair jumpers, and so I thought doing something that's just regular wool with no mohair would be really nice for a change. I'd seen one of the test knitters had used this particular colourway with a tweed and it looked really good, so I was like, okay, I will go for that. Now what I didn't notice till afterwards is in one of the pictures or videos of the jumper that the tester who had done it with this specific yarn posted, somebody asked what size they made and they said in the comments that they knitted the size medium, but the measurements came out around a size small. So I at least feel a little bit justified in <laughs> the fact that this yarn is a little tricky to meet gauge with. Now I mentioned last time I did not do a gauge swatch but once I knitted the top part of the jumper I did wash and block that and measure it from that and it was too tight. However because I could block it to the weights of other jumpers that I owned and like the fit of I wasn't too bothered and just settled for the fact that it would come out smaller than it was supposed to but still hopefully with a fit that I was satisfied with. So yes this is significantly smaller than the size that it was supposed to be. I did knit the size extra small and it has come out quite a bit smaller than the extra small. I didn't gauge swatch because my gauge with most yarn is pretty standard I think, like I'm not an especially loose or tight knitter, and so if I'm using the yarn that's literally specified in the pattern, especially because I've knitted a lot of petite knit patterns before and have always met gauge without too much trouble, so I figured that if petite knit feels that they meet gauge with this yarn, I wouldn't be too far off, and I was surprised at how far off it ended up. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of weird things about this pattern. Firstly, um, the pattern is not for the same jumper as Petite Knit wears in the pictures. There are quite a few differences between the cables in the sample that Petite Knit is photographed in, in the pattern pictures, and the jumper that you get by knitting the pattern. The test knitter versions all match the pattern as opposed to the original sample I think as well, but the cables are actually quite different in how they are sort of arranged on the jumper. Like I think this middle sort of lattice looking cable is arranged a little bit differently and these cables all go in the opposite direction as well, these sort of side cables, which is very weird because I feel like the pattern should match the sample, the pattern should match the picture that is being used to sell the pattern, and yet it doesn't. Or at the very least there should be a comment somewhere about the fact that if you want yours to look like the picture you're going to have to do some modifications, but as far as I can tell that just doesn't exist. I can't say that I'm especially bothered, I like this just as much as the one in the picture, but I was slightly surprised that it came out looking so different. The other weird thing about this pattern, and this doesn't affect me, but I thought that I should mention it because I found it quite surprising. When I was quite a lot of the way through knitting this, I got a pattern update email saying that there were some corrections to the pattern. Now it didn't affect my size, but it affected like half of the total sizes that the pattern was offered in, and the correction was that it just straight up told you to cast on the wrong number of stitches at the neck. I don't mean like the initial cast on edge, I mean like the front neck. But still, the fact that with the number of testers Petit Knit has, nobody caught that before the pattern was published, that was very surprising to me. Because it affected sizes, I believe, extra large through to 5XL, I wonder if she just doesn't have so many testers within that size range and that's why such a significant mistake slipped through the net. But yeah, literally casting on the wrong number of stitches at the neck in half of the sizes feels like a really weird and surprisingly large mistake for a pattern by such a popular and established designer. Anyway, those are my gripes with the pattern. Uh, we can now set that aside and I can say that I really really enjoyed missing this. It was a lot of fun. I mentioned before in the last episode where I had just finished knitting the collar that this folded collar has a different edge, like fold edge, to how a lot of folded collars 
I have made before are constructed, and I thought that this was really neat and really cool. If I get a little bit closer so you can see, this section here, these are all mock cables, which are a lot less tedious to do than traditional cables, so even if you're somebody who likes to use a cable needle, you don't have to use a cable needle for any of this section because it isn't like a classic cable. These are the only proper cables on there, and these only require cable once every, I don't know, eight rows? Ten rows? Eight rows? I really don't know. Um, but it's not very frequent, so you get to knit a lot between having to stop to cable. Additionally, it's one of those patterns where once you've got going, you don't need to look at the pattern. It's super easy to memorise. As I said in the last video, I would say that this is definitely one of the trickier patine patterns. The yoke section is not worded quite as clearly as some other patterns, and you do have to look at a lot of slightly different charts. So I think if you have knitted at least some similarly constructed jumpers or maybe some cables before, that might be for the best. Even though the cables themselves are super simple and you know, are suitable to be a, a first cable. Um, all the charts and stuff are a little bit confusing in how they're instructed to be used at first. I think that the Ingrid sweater, even though it has a lot more short rows, is still easier in terms of how difficult the pattern itself is to follow, but this should be pretty easy to figure out if you've knitted anything like this before. So yes, I think a sort of ambitious beginner might be okay giving this a go. I am going to try it on because, like I said, I don't have any pictures, but I want to show you how it fits so I can comment a little bit on that. Okay, so this is what my weird extra small minus a few sizes looks like on me. Like, you can see there's not very much ease at all. Probably close to zero ease around the bust, I'm not too sure. Also, I haven't quite figured out how to block out these sleeve cables best because they are on that sort of fold if you lay the sleeve out flat to block. So it's very hard to sort of pull them open and encourage them to lay flat. So I might have to sort of try and separately block the sleeve in the other direction or something in order to get these cables open because I really do want to have them be a little bit more visible like these cables here on the body. The, these should be identical to these, but this one I haven't managed to block out. Now, the fabric does fold a little bit uncomfortably right around here, and I think that's because there are no short rows in the sleeve. You just pick up stitches around and this a tube, which would work really well if the jumper was very oversized, but because this jumper is a little bit closer fitting on me, I just think there's a slightly uncomfortable amount of fabric here, and it could perhaps have been benefited by some short rows. Um, like I said, if you've gauge watched, I don't think that'd be a problem because this whole section would drape down a little bit more and the sleeve would be sitting naturally at more of the correct angle, but because my sleeve is attached a little bit further up because of the limited ease, it's just a slightly uncomfortable fit. These sleeves are definitely on the shorter side for something that I knit for myself, I normally make my sleeves very long, but I actually think that it fits the body of this jumper quite well, like because the body is a little bit more fitted and a little bit shorter than a lot of other knitwear I own, this length of sleeve actually looks really nice with it. So yes, that is my petite knit Moby sweater. Um, the cables are the same on the front and back, and I am really happy with the finished result. Okay. My hair's doing something quite strange now, I feel. Let's move on to my second finish object. This is something that I hadn't cast on, or didn't even have any plans of missing in the last video. About this time last year, when the penny glove pattern by Petitna was first released, yes, this is another Petitna object, um, but it's not a pattern that I haven't knitted before. When the penny gloves were first released, I wanted to knit a pair and I wanted to do so on a budget, but also I wanted them to be made of cashmere. What I ended up doing was I bought one skein of Cardiff Cashmere Small, which is, I would say, a relatively light fingering weight cashmere yarn. I think it's about 180 meters per 25 grams. I bought one 25 gram skein and I did manage to knit a pair of penny gloves from it. Now, because it was a bit thinner than the yarn specified in the pattern, I think they did come out slightly smaller than they were supposed to. And I didn't knit the like arm section of the glove to the full length, but overall I was really happy with the finish and the gloves have held up okay. I've had a few people asking about how they've sort of worn over the past year and they've definitely fluffed up a lot, like they have a quite an aggressive halo, but they don't seem to be anywhere near wearing through anywhere and so I think I'll get quite a few years out of them and that is justified for me for a pair of gloves that cost roughly £15 in materials. Anyway, because I have worn them a bunch and I think 
they will hold up. I decided to treat myself to another pair and this time I bought two skeins. Because I was buying two, I instead bought Cardiff Cashmere Classic, which is supposedly a DK weight, 110 or 115, around there, meters per 25 gram skein. And I would not say that it's a DK weight, it feels very light for a DK weight. Like knitting on three millimeter needles, as the pattern specifies, it actually feels like a pretty natural gauge for that yarn to be knitted at. So I would describe it more as like a sport weight, maybe. It's a pretty thin yarn anyway. Anyway, I bought two skeins and I basically just knew that I could knit them as long as I want. Like, I think the pattern called for 33 grams maybe of cashmere and I had 50. So I knitted these a little bit longer than the pattern suggested. Not a huge amount, but just a little bit. And I did have quite a lot left over. This is how much I have left, like this much from each skein. I did just start the new skein when I cast on the second glove, which maybe is a little bit cursed, but I just didn't want to have to join new ends if I didn't have to. I think this is a combined 16 grams-ish remaining. So I used about 34 grams in total, which is really close to the amount specified in the pattern. And I did, as I say, knit them a little bit longer than the pattern specified. So yes, I think it would be possible to get a pair of these gloves out of one skein of Cardiff Cashmere Classic if you knitted the cuff section very short because you only need to use uh, like less than 10 grams less than what I used here and you can get it out of a single skein. This amazing colour that I used is called Issy I think. It's like a periwinkle blue. I think some people would call it like a lilac -y colour but I would definitely say it's more of a blue than a lilac. I don't really wear purple. Um, but I did want to step outside my comfort zone and because it is a smaller accessory I felt like I could go for a colour that I'm less likely to wear for an entire garment and choose something a little bit more fun. They haven't yet been blocked so they are rolling up a little bit at the ends. I'm not hugely bothered by it, my other pair do roll but because they have this sort of slightly rolled looking edge anyway I feel like I just kind of embrace it. Like if I didn't want them to roll I'd have knitted some ribbing and I didn't. Both of the gloves have sort of a pretty side and a side where my thumb join doesn't look quite so great but it's not really visible when you're wearing them so when they're being worn they look really lovely. I will try and put them on. I have unfortunately been rowing a few times this term. I hadn't rowed since before the summer and so my hands, and this is my last bad hand, are like really blistered and I don't really want to ruin my gloves by pushing them over my gross hands but oh well I'll do it for you guys. I do want to give a little shout out to at Knitting Martha on Instagram. When I post a picture on my story of my less bad hand, I'm not gonna like show you guys gore on my Instagram. Um, and I complained about the fact that I couldn't wear the gloves that I just finished that morning. There were a lot of guesses as to which sport I do that could have caused this very minor injury. And uh, amongst many guesses of gymnastics, pole dance, weightlifting, climbing, um, at Knitting Martha was the only person who correctly guessed that it was rowing, so congratulations. So yes, this is what they look like. They do go a little bit further up my arm, but they're contending with both my cardigan sleeve and also the fact that they are just too small for my arm. I guess I have slightly chubbier arms than this pattern is really made for. As you can maybe see, it does still stretch out quite a bit across my palm, but I think this is probably due to the fact that I have very, very large hands. Like, I have the hands of a six foot man, but on a 163 centimetre tall girl. I'm very sorry for that unpleasant mixture of metric and imperial. That is very British of me, I think. I did 60 rows of stockinette before I started increasing for the hand section, which is a pretty nice length, I think, and not too far off what the pattern recommends. And overall, I'm super happy with them and I will definitely wear them a lot. I think that combined with my brown pair that I knitted last year, it's a nice selection of gloves to have. Like I have a neutral one and also a fun coloured one so that I have a pair to match every outfit. As a little celebration, uh, a reward to myself for getting my Scott pattern to the point where it could be released, I did jump online and order quite a few more balls of Cardiff Cashmere yarn. I have a couple of different projects in mind that will be coming up soon and that's my little gift for myself. They haven't yet arrived though so that will be an acquisition in my next video. Okay so those are my finished objects and now I will move on to stuff that I have in progress at the moment. 
I will start off with the big one. I'm not sure if I mentioned before on this channel, I think I did because I do tend to talk a lot about knitwear that is living rent free in my head that I need to construct somehow. Um, I've been wanting a mini dress. Like I had this vision of like a fitted turtleneck mini dress in a worsted weight yarn so it's not too slow to knit and I just couldn't stop thinking about it and here's the thing, when I'm knitting without a pattern I find that it uses quite a lot of my brain energy. So on the occasions when I do feel up to it, I do generally take a break from whatever pattern knitting I'm planning on doing and make the most of that moment of determination and work on something without a pattern. So since I was feeling it, I did um, actually buy yarn and start right away on this. My original plan was to use Heavy Merino from Missing for Olive, which I think is just straight up my all time favourite yarn. I love how quickly it knits up. I think the colour selection is stunning. I love how it wears and I love how it feels. It's a sort of hard feeling merino yarn, but it's not scratchy at all. And the wear is very minimal. I've used it without mohair on quite a few occasions and those pieces look close to brand new despite very, very frequent wear. And yes, I was planning on knitting it in like one of the petroleum blue colours that Knitting for Olive do because I thought that would be lovely, but I decided it might be a nice opportunity to try a new yarn that could potentially be a yarn substitute option for anything that I do knit using the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino that's available in like different parts of Europe I guess and I think it's pretty widely available in America as well. I believe this is a French brand and I again am going to butcher the pronunciation but this is De Rarum Natura Gilead? That doesn't sound very French but I don't know how else you'd say it. Gilead? Gilead? I don't know. This colour is poivre. It's like a very pretty mid-brown colour. My colour choices are pretty limited by what I could find in stock in large enough quantities to knit a whole dress. I ended up buying five of these. Each skein is 100 grams, which is quite nice, so it's like double the size of a skein of the Heavy Merino, um, and it includes 250 metres, so it's the same yardage per 50 grams, but the balls are twice as large. It's 100% Merino wool, I think, and it has kind of an interesting texture. Like, it doesn't offer very much stitch definition. I find that the knitting looks almost felted when I knit it up, and it's very stretchy. But again, it has that sort of nice, hard but not scratchy feeling that I enjoy um, about the knitting for Olive Heavy Merino as well. The gauge is roughly 18 stitches per 10 centimeters, which is exactly the same, and it is exactly what I was looking for. So yes, I think I'll add this to my family of really lovely 18 stitch gauge yarns. This, the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, the Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland Wool is a great option, Cascade 220 if you live in America, and this one, which I will get back to in a minute, but I'm not even going to try to pronounce. So yes, I bought five of them. I don't know whether five of them is going to be enough for this project. I'm currently um, just starting number two. Which way around is it? This way around, I guess. Um, I still have my needles in the collar. I think it's approaching the length I want, but maybe I will miss a little bit more. I've not been having very much fun with it because you guys know I hate small diameter knitting. Like I use Magic Loop for everything before I go anywhere near a 40 centimeter or shorter needle. This is both small diameter and also full twisted rib because it's folded over. I can't even like half ass it and do half twisted rib. Like this is proper twisted rib purling through the back loop. It's very hard to hold up without the shoulders sort of tipping over. But yes, I have joined under the arms and knitted what, like probably almost 10 centimeters under the arms. So far it fits pretty well. I think it stretches a little bit over my shoulders, but not enough for me to want to rip it back. The yoke depth is good and the fit is good. It has just a tiny bit of negative ease um, as I decrease towards my waist, which is exactly what I wanted. It's been quite quick to knit and I think I have a pretty good vision of what I want, with the one major exception being I don't quite know what I want about the hem. I don't like sort of pencil skirts, I want it to be more A-line, like fitted in the waist but then increasing rapidly enough that it doesn't hug my thighs. I don't want that. I want it to be a little bit roomy. So then I'm nervous about doing ribbing on the bottom hem because I feel like that's likely to suck it in unless I block it with a lot of aggression and some pins, which I don't really want to do. 
The other option, of course, is like a folded hem, but I worry that it might be too bulky with this Worcester weight yarn on 4.5mm needles. So yes, maybe I'll just have to experiment when I reach that point. It's the bottom of the skirt, it's a long way off. I don't even have the full sort of bodice section done yet. But overall, I am enjoying this yarn a lot. I think that it has a slightly tighter row gauge when I knit than some other worsted weight yarns, just as a natural side effect of its interesting texture. And also it does have some inconsistency when it comes to thickness. Like sometimes it's a lot more thick and sometimes it does end up rather thin. But so far I'm enjoying this a lot and I know they do a, I believe, sport weight version of this same yarn, as well as a lot of other yarn options that look really interesting from this brand, which I am very tempted to try out. The colours are a little bit darker than I generally go for, um, but they have a lot of very neutral beiges, greys, colours like that, which I really love. So definitely something that I might go back to quite frequently in the future. I've heard very good things about how it wears, so I'm hoping that's true because I'm going to sit my butt on this fabric in this dress and I'm hoping that it doesn't pill or felt or do anything funny. So yes, dress in progress, haven't got very far. Oh, once again, I have a tangle. This is the last brown thing, I promise. But I did just show you in the last video a scarf that I just cast on and I've got a little bit further with it now. Unfortunately, I did have to transfer it onto short circular needles because I needed my long 4.5mm circular needles for the dress. So I'm reaching for it less just because of my dislike of short circulars, even though I know a lot of people would want to knit something like this on 40cm circulars rather than with Magic Loop. I just am a Magic Loop enjoyer, I'm sorry. So yes, this is what I have left of the first skein of... This is a cashmere yarn from Skull Studio. Skull Studio, it's a clothing brand rather than a yarn brand, but they sell a couple of yarn options. And this is the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the shade Bark. This is just, they only have two colours, so it should be relatively easy to identify which this is. They have a brown and a grey, it's a brown. And as I mentioned in the last video, I cast on, um, I think, 100 stitches, 50 stitches on each needle using a magic cast on, and then I've just started knitting a tube in the round using Magic Loop. Based on the current length, um, I'll guess a little bit more out of the first skein, maybe. I think that probably five skeins, which is what I have, will be just about the right amount to finish this scarf, but I'll get back to you on that. I think this will probably be left alone for a little bit and I will start knitting on it a lot faster again once I have long circular needles to put back in it. I also have a sock. This was not cast on in the last episode, um, I've started this sock using this yarn. This is Toast by Debbie Bliss in the shade Silver. I bought it from Lovecrafts. I don't think it's a very widely known or widely used yarn, um, but Lovecrafts does sell it and it very often goes on sale. It's a pretty standard sock yarn, apart from I think it has like a 10% cashmere content. It's certainly much softer than a lot of other sock yarns that I've used, and I have been enjoying the feeling of knitting with it. I don't know how much it will affect the wear, and I also don't know to what extent it's soft because it has 10% cashmere content or to what extent it's just soft because they used a soft wool. In any case, it feels very nice to knit with. The sock has been growing very quickly. This is what it looks like. The pattern is called Stella by Inky Yavakangas. I am probably, again, butchering that name. It's, I believe, a Finnish pattern and it is free on Ravelry. I will link it below, as with everything else mentioned in this video. I knitted like the entire leg and most of the heel turn on the first day because this is a very addictive lace pattern to knit. You don't need to look at any chart, it's like a four row repeat and three of the rows are just knitting pattern. So very very simple. And I'm guessing that with this sock I have turned the heel with a slip stitch heel and I'm guessing there with the foot. Now after the jumper and the gloves this is the third item in this video that is too small for me. I am knitting this on my 2.25mm Chiaogus of Magic Loop. I think the pattern calls for 2.5mm needles and I think I underestimated how much smaller it would get by using the 2.25s instead. So while it goes over my foot and it's relatively comfortable, I think it could definitely have used a little bit more room. So yeah, like the jumper and the gloves, smaller than the pattern really intended, but not so small that I can't use it or that I feel motivated to rip it back and start over. I should probably buy some 2.5mm chow as well for socks. But the pattern is very clear, 
pretty easy to follow and like I said free so I do strongly recommend it because I think it's one of the most fun lace charts that I've followed while working on a pair of socks. Okay I have one last thing to show. It's not a real work in progress but I spoke at great length in the last episode about how I really wanted to knit the Sycamore sweater by Petit Knit. I have not yet cast it on because as I mentioned before when I feel motivation to knit freestyle with no pattern I generally jump on it because that motivation is rare but I did go ahead and do a gauge swatch. This uses quite a few different yarns so I'm not going to list them here but they'll all be listed in the description, brands, colours and I speak a lot about it in the previous episode as well. It, I think, comes up just slightly tight for gauge, but not very significant. So honestly, I think I'll just knit a size small, um, so it's very oversized anyway, or even the extra small. I don't know, I don't think it's going to be far from the correct size. <laughs> I feel like based on my other finished objects in this video, I should probably have learned a lesson by now. But yes, despite the sun deciding to go in, I hope you can see how nice this lovely mulled stripe looks. I probably won't cast it on properly until after I finish the dress because I don't generally keep multiple large full garment size projects on the needles at once but after that I think it will be the next thing because I'm very very excited about it and I absolutely adore every yarn involved. So yes I think that's just about it. Thank you very much for watching my video. Um, I will be back again soon with another one. I have lots more plans to podcast for this channel. I have other special episodes filmed which I'm hoping to edit soon and get up over the next few weeks. And I also want to do more tutorial videos, like my step-by-step -step sweater video. I don't know if that's something that people are interested in. Let me know if you are. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.